Welcome to our grand opening of the Great Buffalo Nation, Dakota Chandi Smoke Shop. Uh, I'm going to introduce our elder, Albert Taylor, who's going to be doing the opening ceremony. Uh, alongside him is uh, one of our inherent leaders, Frank Brown, inherent leader, Orville Smoke. Get away. <laughs> well, first of all, I'd like to uh, uh, congr congratulate the uh, and welcome uh, the Dakota, but also uh, the people that that are here. We welcome everybody. Uh, on behalf of the Dakota people, the, the great Buffalo Nation Dakota, and the government of the great Buffalo Nation Dakota, I welcome you to our Dakota Chandi smoke shop and gaming center. Uh, I, over the media I explained that uh, the, the machines are on the way uh, and it's not here but uh, we're just going to open up uh, our uh, uh, poker tables. Uh, we're going to have a Texas Hold'em game today and this this day is a cel celebration for us and for you too because you are witnessing a significant new beginning for an ancient and honorable nation and re-emerging people in the modern age today. Today you stand on the great Buffalo Dakota land within <coughs> our sovereign territory. This is not new. This has been our land and has remained under our law and our authority for lit literally thousands of years. These are not just words, this is the truth. We, we have never given up any of our rights, titles, and sovereign privileges. So you understand, so as you stand here today, think about this. Feel what it is like to be another nation's territory. Friendly, fair, peaceful neighbor nation's territory. We wish to be clear, we believe in justice. We believe in law. We follow the rules of law. We believe in good government. We believe in fairness and peace. We know we are operating within our true sovereign rights, title, and privileges here today. We are taking a small, non-threatening steps like this store to recover our rights, title, privileges on our land. What do we want? We want and we welcome an impartial and proper international review of our claim to our lands, property, interests, and our sovereign rights, title, and privileges. We want meaningful, respectful communication, negotiation with our neighbors, Canada, and its governments. We want, we want a responsible, timely payment and transfer of funds and properties and interests due to to us from our neighbors, Canada and its government. We want a workable, win-win relationship between our nations. We ask Canadian neighbors and governments for their patience, respect, and cooperation as we move on our nation's rightful path of recovery, growth, and so forth. We have a legal and moral right and need to begin our economic here today. With that, I'd like to say welcome. I'll let Chief Smoke make his statement. Good morning, uh, good afternoon, uh, welcome to our store, uh, it's a store that's uh, 
not specific. It doesn't belong to I, Chief Brown. It belongs to Dakota. And uh, I was given a paper to read, and I'm going to try and stick with it. But um, I usually do my own stumbling and that kind of stuff. So uh, rather than going there, I, um, I'm very proud today to, to, to be who I am. Uh, and um, a couple of things that need to be brought to the forefront. Uh, Chief Brown said this is a very small step in establishing a better future for our people. We've been subjected for the last hundred years or so to policy that cannot justify a better or a life that is human. And, um, we sat by for the longest time as the Dakota people and that the country run itself, hoping that one day we would have the privilege of being recognized. But it never happened. In the meantime, while we were waiting, our people are dissipating, our people are dying from all the, the woes of uh, their third world, third, third world uh, conditions. I come from a community that's isolated. I have absolutely no access to it. I have no roads. My uh, houses are in conditions that are not fit for human use. And uh, to me, the store and the, our endeavor in the last several months represents a source that would provide for my people something that the federal government of this country cannot do. One of the things we never did as Dakota people is we never signed a treaty with this government or anybody. And we've always waited, wanted uh, to sit down and uh, to establish something that would produce the tomorrow that my people need. I am uh, a spokesperson for my people, but I've been given a responsibility to provide for my people and, and such. Uh, when 1972, when the Canadian government gave self-administration to First Nations in Canada. <clears throat> they, we were all excited simply because we were going to take tomorrow and mold it the way it needed to be molded to meet the needs of our people. But nobody ever told us that when, in 1972 when we took that responsibility that there would be no funding in place to address all the needs of the future growth of our country and our people. Today we take a small step in establishing our own economies and who in the right mind would stop people from trying to create revenue for their children, for their families, for all those that are in need, especially the aged uh, who seem to have absolutely no resources from anybody. So welcome uh, and hopefully we will succeed, or I shouldn't say, hopefully, we will succeed. Thank you. Uh, before we go any further, I, I would like to uh, show this legal map here. And Canada has said that the Dakotas are refugees from the United States. But this is a map of, in, in 1857, it's called the Aerosmith map. And, and when, Craig can explain it better than I do. So he, he'll explain it to what, what uh, our, our battle was. And uh, when, when they called us refugees uh, of our own territory, on our own land, uh, we wanted to, to address that and, 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 and prove that uh, we're not refugees of this land, we are from this land. And, uh, and we found this map and, and it says Sewer Dakota here, that that's in Manitoba, Alberta and Saskatchewan. This is, this is the land that, that's, that's unsettled with Canada right now. And, and these are the people that he didn't deal with. And that's the people here today. And that's what 
That's what's in court today. This map and, and uh, Brandon's son couldn't understand what I was talking about. So I want him to see this map and understand this is what we're talking about here. But uh, I call this a migration map because uh, some people that uh, belong here are, are migrated here uh, uh, in 1857. But before that, the, our territory was much, much bigger. So this is this is what's going into court today, and we will be in court with uh, Canada soon. But the thing is, uh, when it's time to litigate in court, we cannot go into Canada's court because it would be a complete. Uh, conflict of interest. We're taking Canada to court in their court is not the, uh, that's not the way it's going to be. Because we're on this map, we, we are international people. We're not uh, Canada's treaty people. We're still our own people. And we want to negotiate. How are we going to live with these people here? That's what, that's the justice we want. We're looking for justice to justify who we are. And we've, in, in this research, we've compiled over 800 documents, legal documents, to prove what we're doing. We understand what we're doing, that's why we're here today. A lot of people don't understand that we're going to be locked up because, because the province or the RCMP is going to come. But the question is, what, what laws are they going to use to do that? And, and we, we demonstrated and proved that uh, in 2009 uh, in Chanupok, in uh, we got busted for selling. So when the time came to charge me, I asked that question. What laws are you going to use? Well, we have this treaty process for all the Indians in Canada, they said. But I don't have a treaty, I said. So how, how does that work, I said. I'm not a treaty person and, and, and you're putting me in a treaty process. Well then, we're sorry. We didn't know that the Dakotas didn't have a treaty with Canada. So I guess you can go home, sell your cigarettes, and make your own laws, he said. So that's exactly, that's what's happening today. We're selling cigarettes, and we have our own tobacco regulations. We have our own licenses as a nation. So that's what's happening. So this is what people don't understand. And this is what we're talking about. The land, the title, the title, the rights and the privileges are still there on this map. It's still a legal map. So with that, you know, we can further discuss this, but we have a ceremony to do here and, and we'll do the ceremony. Then we can go. If any questions, we'll, we'll, we'll answer. But this is the map for you to see. Before, before we uh, start the ceremony, I'd like to offer a gift of tobacco. And uh, thank you and uh, respect for welcoming, welcoming, welcoming us here to his territory, the Dakota Territory. I also have another gift for them. It's the Mohawk warrior flag, which I want them to fly proudly as a symbol of the newfound strength and unity between us, Rainbow Tobacco, representing the Mohawk Nation of Ganawage, and the chief, 
and his elders for the Dakota people. Thank you. Of course. It's an honor for me to be here today. I, uh, you know, like a lot of things come to mind. Like before, uh, before, uh, before I say my uh, my prayers, you know, the Dakota people fighting for their land. In 1862, there was a mass execution in the United States where they hung 38 people plus two. That's the worst history in the history of the United States. And I have the, I have the privilege and the honor of going down there on December 26th. I always miss Christmas down here, but doesn't really matter to me because you know you know one of the things I realized when I was down there I seen the history when they were taking the 38 people to be hung that December 26th when they were taking them down to the gallows the children the women everybody they were throwing stones at them would, you know, it reminds me of that same, same thing that happened in the white man's Bible there when they were going to crucify Jesus. They were flogging, they were spitting on him, they were doing everything they can. That's exactly what happened. And you know, the United States goes around saying that, you know, they're trying to make peace with the world. Why don't they clean up their own backyard first? You know, I get so, you know, like I, uh, I don't want to be using some words that I, <laughs> that I shouldn't, I guess. <laughs> but anyway, like, you know, uh, with that, like, you know, it's a big day for us. I've been fighting for my people. Oh, yes, last Saturday I was 84 years old. And I've been fighting for my people for 50 years. I just made a remark to one of my friends from, from, the, from the Mohawk Territory. I hope I live long enough to see some of the results that are going to benefit. Not just the Dakota people, but the, all of Canada. Before, before I say my prayers, there's a, there's a prayer song I would like to sing. <clears throat> Hey chow exu yedo Hey yo he o Wakoche techinda Hey we chow exu yedo Hey yo he o Oh he tik up he Hey we chow exu yedo Hey ちょっとやってきた、ほっとやってきてな。沖山たんかいつきや。ま、こっち来ちゅわ。ま、カトロカトカ。ま、カウイテグレディチャフミアバ。スカウイチャスタヒゴオフタンオンキャプテセチョン
Koja ka otahi, kana tako skam de ojako te kana tena ojako. Tako je da kako. A te o kata ka usun da kako, usun da kako. O heći te ro, me tako as. Yeah. Okay, the store is now officially open for business. Yeah. Yeah.